Dear Professor Chen, uh, dear Professor Cao, dear Deputy Mr. Cao, and dear distinguished guests, speakers, uh, but also dear friends from industry and media, good afternoon. Um, it is really a privilege to be here today um, to talk about this amazing story. And I'm personally moved to see, despite the pandemic situation that is currently happening, that so many partners have joined us here together, both physically but also online. I think it shows, shows really how jointly we are committed, not only to face COVID, but also to face the future health challenges that are ahead of us, to develop the biomedical industry here in Taiwan, and ultimately to create a sustainable and resilient health system for patients across the, 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 the world. If you allow me for the next 15 minutes, I would like to present to you how AstraZeneca is redefining, redefining the boundaries of science, but also how we are developing the biomedical innovation, both globally, but also in Taiwan. Our story in Taiwan started more than 75 years ago, when we were working very closely with the government to address one another big health challenge, which was malaria in the 1940s. More than 75 years ago, we started driving and addressing health challenges, public health challenges. And still today, more than 75 years later, our ambition and aspiration, what we strive for every day at AstraZeneca, is to push the boundaries of science and to bring life-changing medicines to patients. To patients and these life-changing medicines to ultimately address some of the biggest global health challenges but also to address some of the major causes of deaths across the world. Of course, within the pandemic that we've been facing these days, and that has started more than two years ago, AstraZeneca immediately started working very closely in partnership to find, first and foremost, whether we had new and existing therapies that could help to address some of, some of the pandemic situations. While most of you obviously are very uh, familiar with the, the vaccine itself, the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, it is actually uh, our long-acting antibody that is also one of the most unique s solutions that is available. Through our collaboration and through our internal antibody te development technology, we spent a lot of effort to understand and to define and identify an antibody that can ultimately help to address the corona uh, response in immunocompromised patients. And it is a solution that we are looking to bring forward also in Taiwan to help in this next phase of the pandemic. The story of the vaccine, of course, is quite spe special, specific and remarkable, I would say to a certain extent as well, because in less than, in just over three months, this vaccine was brought from sequence to humans, an unprecedented speed of action. And as you can see, within less than 18 months, we had delivered more than a billion doses globally. And I really appreciated what Professor Chen talked about because a vaccine addressing a pandemic face on has to be a global response. And ultimately, I think it is with a lot of proudness at AstraZeneca that we can say that we have truly built a vaccine for the world. To date, we have released more than 2.8 billion doses for supply across the globe in more than 180 countries. And I think what is so important is that two-thirds of our doses have actually gone to low and lower middle income countries. And this is what is really important to make sure that we can end this pandemic once and for all. Beyond the vaccine, because vaccine and immune therapies is only a small part of what we are and what we do in AstraZeneca. This year, we were once again uh, announced as the most inventive pharmaceutical company by ID Pharma, Pharma. And obviously, we feel very proud about that. And let me explain you. Thank you. Xixie. Let me explain you why that is not a coincidence and what in AstraZeneca we are doing to make sure that we continue to be at the top of that table. 
First and foremost, our strategy has been to put ourselves very strategically, to the clo very close to the major R&D hubs and R&D strategic centers in the world. Um, we are working very closely to John Hopkins University in the US, to the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, and to the Center of Biomedical, uh, the Biomedical Campus also in Cambridge. This is all extremely important to be part of that ecosystem that is driving the innovation. You know, our scientific R&D pipeline has been delivering very strongly. And here are just some of the figures for you to be aware about. In 2021, we had more than 170 programs in the pipeline. More than 160 of those were already in the clinical phase. Also, it is of course very important to understand how these programs are developing not only as a pipeline product, but ultimately how effective we are in bringing them to the healthcare systems. And so last year, we had 27 new molecular entities and life cycle management programs that were successfully brought from clinical phase to regulatory approval in major countries across the world. And we also have 16 projects in pivotal trials or under regulatory review at the end of 2021. Our focus in AstraZeneca, as I said it before, is beyond vaccine and immune therapies. And we are focused on five main therapy areas. Last year, actually, we added the fifth therapy area when we acquired Alexion, a rare disease business. The capabilities that we are working with is probably what is most important to understand here because it is not anymore about small molecules only. It is about small molecules, but also about biologics. It is about shifting to precision medicines. I think as was already uh, also shared by Deputy Minister Cao. And 90% of the pipeline that you have just seen of AstraZeneca is actually precision medicines. They are targeted therapies that are very specific for, to a response in subpopulations. And so it is extremely important that we continue to work together to find these subpopulations, to develop the right biomarkers to identify the right patients, and that we drive successful and fast access to these innovative medicines, of course, as well. With all this innovation that is happening, and I talked about it, of course, access and reimbursement is extremely important for us. We continue to work extremely hard to make sure that our products can go from lab to patients as quickly as possible. But I would really like to emphasize here that at AstraZeneca, we think about more than just our medicines. We want to be positioned as a true ecosystem partner. We are actively working to develop full ecosystems, full disease management models for patients to think about the early onset of the disease, how can we diagnose more accurately and more broadly, but also what is needed to then, after the treatment, make sure that patients can either fully recover or ultimately get the support that they need for the longer term. And we do this through our A Catalyst network. So this is actually how, as AstraZeneca, we're trying to play a big role in driving and bringing and developing biomedical innovation across the globe. Globally, we have 22 hubs for our A Catalyst network. But probably what you're more interested in is, so what does that mean for Taiwan? Taiwan is actually one of those 22 hubs. So we have an innovation hub here in Taiwan. And we've been working extremely closely to NBRP, Academia Sinica, ITRI, and many other academics and government bodies to make sure that we develop new innovation, that we create a platform where startups can actually go from local to global, where we can help them to accelerate their solution and bring it to first and foremost broad usage in the local ecosystem, but ultimately that we can so critically help startups to move beyond the borders of where they ultimately are initiated. In 2019, we started with the accelerator programs. We did two um, series of those, which was really screening for new startups. We screened many, many tens and tens of startups and ultimately identified 19 startups that were directly coached, mentored by AstraZeneca global people. On top of that, in 2020, 2021, we then started to evolve our focus to say, how can we help 
these startups actually to be connected. Simple and single solutions to be connected in a full ecosystem. And ultimately, connecting them and finding what is needed for those startups is not only, of course, to identify them, but is actually connecting them with incubators, connecting them with venture, venture capitalists and other startups that can coach them and mentor them to go to the next stage and ultimately enter the global stage. Here are a few examples of what actually that has already brought here in Taiwan. First and foremost, last year, and with a lot of proudness, we opened the first future healthcare lab at the ITRI facility. This is a future-proof connected disease management model for the management of asthma and COPD care. The solution shows um, smaller innovations from more than 15 partners, and it is an open site where keys, HCO representatives can go every day to live the experience and see how they can bring it back to their own healthcare organizations, medical centers, or even hospitals. This year, despite COVID, we are expecting more than 170 keys from 40 um, hospitals to go and visit uh, this future healthcare lab. Of course, it is also very important that we think about data generation. And I think in a place like Taiwan, where there is so much good data available, we need to use that data more effectively. Also, we need to think not only about real-world evidence, which is something that we are actively shaping uh, with many of the medical centers, but we also need to think about clinical programs, clinical trials, how we can we bring earlier phase clinical programs here uh, into the difficult medical, me medical centers and uh, across, across Taiwan. And that's why we've actually partnered with TriNetX. TriNetX provides a solution, a network solution, where medical centers, hospitals, HCOs can connect, can find new studies to be part of and to basically set themselves up as a trial site. Um, it provides a solution which can help to find funding uh, for their own trials and also it can support, again, with the own and personalized real-world evidence generation, all very important to continue shaping that ecosystem and that wealth of data and evolution of the healthcare system. And finally, my last slide, I just wanted to bring to life and share with you some of the real-world examples of how in partnership with governments, with academia, and with other industry partners, we are impacting disease management models, ecosystems, across some of the major disease health burdens that exist today across the country and globally. We have uh, initiatives within diabetes, within asthma and COPD, also lung uh, cancer, which obviously is a huge um, problem and the main killer uh, when it comes, the main cause of that within cancer. And last but not least, we have just last year started to increase our efforts as well within CKD, which actually is in many cases, and I wouldn't say in Taiwan, but I guess because I think Taiwan has done a lot of effort historically on CKD, but globally, CKD is absolutely a massive health burden, very much underdiagnosed, and which requires a lot of attention. I think the commonality between all of these disease areas is that ultimately it is all about early identification, early diagnosis of the patient. And if we can continue to partner together to drive this early diagnosis, and when diagnosed, we can make sure that the right patient gets access to the right innovative medicine, I think this is how altogether we can truly create a resilient and sustainable health system. Thank you for your attention.